so it's time to move my boiler. This beast weighs 6,000 pounds and I'm starting from here and we're heading over there. But first I need that concrete slab. Here I've got laid out the, uh, the slab. The wood shed's gonna go here. There's gonna be a space in between the wood shed and this is where the boiler's gonna go. I left this square out because the utilities come into the back of the boiler and I don't want to have to deal with concrete when I'm hooking up the utilities. So I'll be able to dig right to where the utilities come in. So first step, I need to get this topsoil off of here. So I'm going to do some marking paint. Now let's get the backhoe on the tractor. So there, the topsoil's off, just need some stone. Getting ready to move this beast. First thing I gotta do is get it unhooked. Actually, the first first thing I have to do is drain the propylene glycol out of it. Uh, I have propylene glycol in it because I don't have to worry about the boiler being fired in cold weather. It won't freeze. So if it, if it was just full of water and it was theoretically zero degrees out and I didn't have it fired, it could actually crack because the ice would get in and expand. So, uh, so I don't have to worry about that. But uh, propylene glycol is not free, so I gotta save it. So I'm gonna get some big trash cans and some hose, and I will drain it into, uh, into some trash cans uh, down here below it. Down here you can see a pipe coming out of the ground. What this is is a conduit with the electric in it. This is an insulated pipe that has two water lines, hot and a cold. The hot line actually it pumps out of the bottom of the boiler. It goes through this pump, which just turns around and, and takes it through the red. So that's the, the hot line going to the house. And then this is the cold line coming back from the house, which comes up and dumps in the top of the boiler. So the cold water will go down through the hot water and it'll mix. So you end up with a uh, steady temperature in your, in your boiler water. I'm not gonna move it the way I originally wanted to uh, using that lift hook up there. It was a neat idea. It would have been interesting because theoretically you could do that without any heavy equipment. You just need a big lever and men that are strong enough to get it in position and then just stack it with counterweights. But uh, I decided it's going to be too dangerous, too much work, not worth my time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it with the tractor. Now when I bought this thing he told me to only use the lift hook. But when I look under there, I mean it's sitting on feet and it has a 
tubing frame underneath. So I think it's gonna be fine. If you look here, on this side I've got feet, and then over here I have these, I don't know if those are for guiding a forklift or what, it, it kinda looks like it, doesn't it? But whatever those are. And I'm, I've got a space in between there that I could put a skid. And it'll actually keep it in position between the feet and whatever this thing is. So, what I've done is measured it. Uh, I need four and a half by five and a half. So uh, I'm going to go off to the sawmill and I'm going to cut myself a couple skids. Four and a half by fifteen. All right, two skids. The plan's going to be, once I have the skids, I'm going to jack it up there and there with two uh, farm jacks. And that'll get the whole thing up enough that I can pull those concrete pads out of there, put the skid in, and then let it back down. So one of the tricks to moving this boiler, it doesn't look like that big of a deal. It's right here. And I'm going to move it to right there. The problem is, it needs to turn around. This side is the door. This side is where you load it. So once it's over here, the door needs to be facing this way. So I'm going to have to get it on those skids and then spin it 180 degrees and then drag it over there. Alright, now I need to jack this thing up. So I don't know what the official name for this type of jack is. I always called it a farm jack. And uh, they're pretty cool, pretty handy. They, um... <clears throat> can lift upwards of around 6,000 pounds. And they don't, uh, they don't use hydraulics. The way it's working is there's two pins and they're going into these holes. And basically you're levering off of one pin until the other one can be set in place, whether you're going up or down. So if you watch, you'll see those pins, one goes out, one goes in, and you're basically just walking from one pin hole to the next using this big lever. See that pin just came up and then engaged with the next hole. So now I'm levering off of that one until the next one comes up and pops into the hole. And now the weight's being held on that pin so I can move the next one up to the next hole. I had battery problems. So basically, I, I drag the, the concrete out, I put the skid underneath, and I just lowered it down. I just used one jack to lower it, and now this side is on the skid. 
I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side, so I'll make sure I get that footage. I think I'm just going to try it with one. All right, I've got the chains hooked up. They're equal length. They're both going to the front end loader. And then of course the tractor. problem. Here I'm spreading sand to help it slide better on the concrete. This actually worked very well. Now before I pull it into position, the back of the boiler is going to overhang off of this end and the utilities are going to come up underneath the boiler. You see that? They come up through that hole right there. So if I just pull the boiler into position right now, I'm going to have a heck of a time digging that out. So I'm going to get the backhoe and I'm just going to dig that down.
And there it is all leveled out. So I did one thing with this shed that's a little unusual, but there's reasons for it. Uh, the concrete is not level. Now why would I do that? Well, the main reason is because...